Hello everybody, and welcome to Elden Ring. Figured I'd start a playthrough on the channel of this, as the Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC is coming in three months or so. So it seems like an apt time to do, well, a playthrough. Now I have, um, a lot of hours in this game, and the image that I just showed of my hours in Steam are just the online ones. You have to play the game in offline mode in order to use some mods. So, clearly, I played the crap out of this game. So I guess you could consider this particular playthrough almost like a walkthrough. But not really, but kind of. I'm a bit too dense to do a proper walkthrough because I don't 100% anything. But if you follow what I do in this particular playthrough, you'll probably have a nice, easy go of it through the game. And you'll understand why. I'm not looking to do some kind of all-pro build, and I'm not going to do sorcery either. I'm going to do the next best thing. Not even the next best. The best. But we'll get to that when we do. For now, let's go ahead and start a new game. Our hope is to, more or less, get all the way through the game in this playthrough before the Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC releases, which is in about three months. But of course, this isn't the only game that I'm playing, so it won't be done too quickly. Now, oddly enough, I tend to start as the Confessor just for a handful of faith points for extra healing, but I don't think I'm going to do that this time, because I think this run is going to be Vagabond. This is your standard, I hit things hard and I don't get hit very hard warrior style starting class although the starting class in this particular game barely matters I have to name the character every time survivor i'm not too into the customization type stuff but uh, i guess we could try to do something let's see if i remember correctly hitting this button repeatedly will slowly customize my character into a monstrosity and it does appear to indeed be turning me into a half man half fish a uh, half neanderthal half fish Mostly fish. I'll get back to you once I'm done with this little process. <laughs> there we have it, folks. Part puffer fish, or nothing else. The kind of creature that has more eyes than brain cells. I've already been sitting here for far too long. We'll never see the character outside of armor anyway, so <laughs> we should probably get this started. For the keepsake... Probably go with something, I don't know, simple, easy. The Golden Seed is a really good standard if you don't really know what else to pick. Yeah, honestly, there's nothing else worth picking, so we'll take that. And start our little adventure here. Now we will probably just end up dying to the very first boss that we come across. Because while I could take the time to sit there and kill it, I really don't want to. I mean, we'll give it a little try, but I haven't played this game in almost a year, I think. So I'm not really banking on... Oh, oh god. Start out heavy rolling. I'm not really banking on being able to show off some elite gaming skills until I get my seal legs back. Now let's take that damn halberd off. It's weird that you start with a sword and a halberd with this class. What is that about? I literally never picked this class, so it's a bit of a new experience for me. Might get some backlash from the hardcore sweat lord types, but I tend to pick either a cleric type, you know, faith, or sorcerer, because I like the convenience of being able to pew pew things from a distance. But we'll be replacing that with arrows in this particular playthrough, because, well, as you move along in the game, they become insanely cheap and easy to get. Now then, let's go ahead and pick a fight with, um, somebody who's a little too handsy for his own good. Bring it on, nerd. And there's the last attack in that string, or at least it seemed like it. Does he always do that many attacks? As you can see from his health bar, we do quite a bit of damage. Ow. Damn. He just never stops, huh? Oh, this is one of the easiest ones to deal with. You just run right under him. Oh, the scream. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Me and you. Sword and shield boys. The sword and porters. Woo, woo. Watch it, buddy. I literally can't take another single hit. Good thing we have this shield. Oh, you can just run around him for that. Neat. Well, not even run, just walk. Literally nothing competes with the sword and shield style in this game. Sorry, one thing competes and still involves the shield, of course. And that is the shield and spear, or rapier, whichever one you're into. You can do either, really. And that's probably what we're going to do for this particular playthrough because it makes everything ridiculously easy. Oops, I died. I got distracted by, well, myself talking. And then he threw us in the garbage. Hooray. And then we get approached by a lady on a horse and she, I don't know, whispers something at us and we get back up. I don't care. Skip the cutscene. Always skip cutscenes. They're lame. Okay, not always. Most of the time, though. Should we go down here? Uh, no, not really. 
There's no reason to. Actually, there's an emote. I want that emote. All right, we're going through the tutorial. I want the emote. You will be mine. Wasting so much time just to get an emote I'll never use. I'll never use emotes in this game. Oh, I just hit select to use emotes. Is that Dark Souls that used to be like that? I'm not sure. Well, let's go ahead and rush through this, I guess. Here's the part where they teach you that enemies exist. Here's the part where they teach you how to swing swords at them. And again... And again, here's the part where they teach you that this game oftentimes throws multiple enemies with projectiles at you. Ooh, fruit. I forget, you can't kick in this, can you? No, you can't. Just do charged heavy attacks, I guess. Ouch, the heck, man. That was rude. Now I'm gonna have to penetrate you. Is he dead? One attack? Good. So our goal, after we clear this little tutorial area, for no good reason, is to find a good rapier, like perhaps Rajir's rapier. We'll find a good rapier. If we can find a spear before that, then I guess that, oh, I got hit again. Dead. Aggressively R1. That's how we do here. It's not PvP after all. No need to complicate things. Sadly, that's the way that this game ended up. Is that there's very little reason to ever use heavy attacks, outside of a few select weapons that have very good heavy attacks. Instead, you have jump attacks like the one that I just did there, and then light attacks, and that's basically your entire gameplay rhythm. Apart from that, get ready to Dark Souls the crap out of this Dark Souls game. This game, much like Tekken, two of my favorite game series, Souls and Tekken, follow the same general rhythm. That is that you want to prioritize not taking damage over doing damage. So if there's a chance that you might get hit, stop whatever you're doing, even if you think that you can sneak some damage in. It's funny that they put the hardest boss in the game right at the beginning. Great soldier of Godric has spared me again today. We must offer our prayers, for he has given us mercy today. And there's the emote that I'll never use. Open Sasami. Man, the characters in this game do not know how to open doors in a non-dramatic fashion. Why isn't it like Resident Evil 4, where you can just double tap the open button and your character just brutally smashes the door? That would be great. I would love it. Multiplayer items. Probably not going to be using those. I am currently running the game in offline mode. Otherwise, I'd be tempted to put up my summon sign and summon other people. All that jovial, jolly cooperation. But that's not really the objective of this particular playthrough. We're trying to get through the game with as many... Not as many, what the hell? As few distractions as possible. Sup, nerd? You are maidenless. You're just gonna throw that at me? Right at the beginning? I just met you for the first time and you just tell me I get no bitches. Calling me maidenless. How dare. How dare. We're not mages, so we don't need the blue flask at all. Let's move this straight to HP. And even though I just said I want as few distractions as possible, we're gonna get distracted. I can't not fight the treason. Me and you, buddy. We're gonna have a little bit of a 1v1. You know, this guy is actually surprisingly simple to handle. You just gotta make sure not to get tricked into attacking him too many times. For instance, I just held my shield up and rotated around him twice and didn't get hit because of it. He is surprisingly derpy with many of his attacks, like this one. Big charge up attack. You can just walk at him and strafe. And if you have a shield, you don't even have to work on your dodging timing. Really simple as hell. I already got him down, what, 1-6 HP, I think? Something like that. <laughs> just, just aggressively strafing at him. See, like this, you just walk in a circle, and then you avoid the attack. You get a free hit in, too. This is the only one that I would suggest dodging, and I would dodge away instead of toward. That's because it gives you a free hit if you do it properly. Ooh, that's my bad. I bobbed when I should have weaved. Almost halfway there already. Easy peasy. Never done this before with a big old shield. I usually have to do it with the damn short sword that comes with the sorcerer because you run out of magic in about two seconds in this fight. Let's sneak in three attacks there. Think he's gonna start doing? Yep, the shield attack. I think you can still block that one, but I don't suggest it. You cannot block this one though. I don't believe that you can block that at all. Everything else though, you're fine. Although usually you get more opportunities to attack if you dodge instead of blocking. As per the usual with Dark Souls, or any souls like, because it only takes a certain amount of stamina to dodge every time, and it's a pretty low amount, like this. Very little. So I have plenty of stamina left over to attack. But if I were to block all of these attacks, well, it eats the crap out of your stamina. 
Starting to wonder if he's the boss or if I am. I played this game way too much to be having problems with him. I'm surprised I even took damage. It was entirely my bad. Oh, there we go. If you roll too early, that thing's got a super active hitbox. Oh, don't hit me. I guess that's what I get for talking smack. I'm just going to take a moment to heal up. Drink some good old Estus. I mean, crimson flasks or whatever. Come on, buddy. Keep swinging. <laughs> you really can just strafe with the shield. I've never done this before. It's so easy. Yay, jumping attack. <laughs> so many of his attacks just whiff if he stands still. Oh man, that's kind of funny. Including the shield one, you can just strafe that too. What the hell? Oh, not that one. That's an AoE. But this, <laughs> right over the head. Wonderful. Easy peasy. Tree Sentinel dead. And we get a weapon that we will never use. The Golden Roberto. Poor deer. Had to be eliminated. Never hurts getting some extra beast bones. That translates directly to throwing knives and arrows. Arrows might be very important for this particular run because, well, I'm used to doing the game in a very projectile heavy way. And by projectile heavy, I just mean I initiate all fights with a projectile and then I go melee. I don't know what other people do when they play sorcerer, but I don't just sit back and pew pew my spells and everything until I win. I usually open up, kill one enemy with that, and then kill the other three with some kind of, I don't know, magic enchanted melee weapon. But anyways, here's our first grace. Well, actual grace. Earned. Unlocked. Grace. We'll be coming back here shortly. Let's go ahead and have a little chat with the merchant. See what kind of goodies he has. The crafting kit, if you're just starting this game, and for whatever reason following this like a walkthrough, even though it's not, I guess you could. Buy yourself a crafting kit. Never hurts. These cookbooks, get them. One-time purchases, they unlock crafting items. It's a good idea. Get those and maybe the cracked pots if you're into that kind of thing. They can be pretty good. You have to farm for them though. Ugh. Ugh. Gross. Does this shield have a parry? It does. Okay, we don't have to buy anything then. So, let's go ahead and keep moving forward. Oh, actually, no, let's rest at the grace first and get our, get our flasks back. Hmm, should we do some dungeons along the way? It's not a bad idea. First things first, though, eliminate the deer. See if we can get to it once. We can. Then get this one, and the other one runs away. We got a handful of beast bones, though. Because we just bought the crafting kit, we can, well, craft. And the only item, as far as I know, that comes with the crafting kit is these bone darts, which are pretty useful for getting the enemy's attention. But one of the books that we got allowed us to craft bone arrows. Now this takes three beast bones and you craft ten arrows and it's pretty nice. Once you have a bow, that is, I don't. So, I won't. Let's go ahead and run down this path and eliminate a couple of birds. As far as I know, you can just stagger them to death with just about any weapon by aggressively R1-ing in their general direction. Now sure, just like any good enemy in a Souls game, they do in fact hit like a truck in these early moments, but you can just stun lock them. Easy win. The PZs are more than easy. Let's go ahead and get this guy. Oftentimes, if you have the opportunity, like right here, right here with my character just giving this guy a big old sniff from behind, I could hit him with a sneak attack with R1. And that's good, you know, giving them a little sneak attack damage, but if you sneak up behind most enemies, you're usually better off hitting them with a big heavy charged attack instead. If you heard that ringing sound, that put him immediately into a stagger state, which means you can repost him. So I hit R1 too quickly there, but I was able to fully charge a heavy attack, and then I could have backstabbed him afterward as well. You literally just get more free damage out of the ordeal. I very rarely play any even, any even vaguely sneaky play style, so that's a piece of advice for the people who will do that, but you might not see that moving forward much in this. Mm -mm murder. Suppose we'll go ahead and go through this cave here. I don't remember what the reward is at the end of this, so I guess we're about to find out. I do, however, I know that there's wolves in here, and that's bones. We need bones. Get a little bit of XP, I guess. I don't have any ranged weapons. I might actually take a bunch of damage during this. See if we can't sneak attack one of them first. Try to come right down here with a power attack. Like this. Ah, that was the wrong way. I'm locked onto the wrong doggo. Don't do it, bad doggy. Oh, crap. Trying to take out the tougher one first. I'm gonna get murked for sure. <laughs> this was a bad idea. And a half. Okay, chug. Well, here's a good showing of not having to be good at the game to survive with this kind of build. <laughs> Two down. 
See, all it took was Estes and a little bit of a panic attack. Also, none of them dropped anything, so I don't get any bones out of the ordeal. However, we do get this, which is a cracked pot. If you're into that sort of thing, then I believe there's two more doggos right down here. Ouch. Where in the hell did you come from? <laughs> yeah, I'm just letting these things wail on me. I'm not used to having such heavy armor this early in the game, so I'm just letting myself tank aggressively. Yeah, that was a... I don't remember what it's called, like a retaliation strike or whatever. <laughs> it's not a riposte, per se. It's different. But when you block an attack from the front, obviously, because you can't block from the back. What the hell am I saying? When you block an attack, you can hit Heavy Attack, or R2 on controller. PlayStation controller. The superior one. And you'll get that nice little ring sound effect. And a pretty heavy, poise-damaging attack afterward. Also does a little bit more than a standard heavy attack in damage, which can be good against some creatures, but it is a bit stamina costly because you're blocking an attack and doing a heavy attack afterward. It adds up. Like this. See all that stamina that I just lost from that? Ridiculous. <laughs> you can just block the crap out of these guys, huh? Can I parry them? I'm not gonna bank on it. You know, I'll try. Not that. That would count as a heavy attack. Let's get a normal one. Swing, 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 parry. Nope, you cannot parry these. Or if you can, I just messed up the timing. But you want to watch out because they definitely designed these enemies in a very unintuitive <laughs> attack style. I don't know, they, they all swing at a weirdly slow pattern. There's a lot more wind-up than there is attack animation. Okay, so that's a five-hit string. That's just a big old heavy attack. I've never actually looked at the animations for these things. Oh, that's four attacks. We're learning. Get a nice little heavy attack in there. I think I can stagger this guy. I'll have to try it with a jump attack once there's a nice opening. Two, three, four, five, and six. And jump attack. Let's try another one. Yeah, you can just repeatedly stagger him. Not bad. Okay, that's a... Four hit string, seemingly. Oh, watch out. Double roll. Yeah, jump attack is the best way to handle these guys. Even with just this crappy standard longsword, you can stagger them pretty uh, competitively, aggressively. Ouch, it's a lot of stamina damage. Yeah, see, they swing so damn slow that it's hard to tell what's happening with them half the time. Like, when's the attack gonna come out? Is it gonna come out? Will it ever come out? Some of the bosses, you'll see as we move forward, or if you end up playing the game, you'll see, have such long wind-ups that as soon as you see them begin their attack animation, you should probably just get up and go make a sandwich. Eat that, maybe take a shower, do your taxes, come back, take a nap, and then raise your shield, because they're ready to attack. Oh, I should probably highlight this. After you finish a dungeon, or at least caves in particular, there's usually a little teleporter, a little blue light beam, like I just interacted with, that will send you back to the beginning of the cave. Keep in mind that these do not, in fact, refresh your Estus FP or HP. Damn, I am one chunky boy. How much armor do I even start out with here? Okay, so I have 26% damage negation. That's pretty good. I'm used to having, like, 8. Because mage couldn't grab these mushrooms. Mm-mm, <clears throat> mushroom gang. One dork down. All right, let's go ahead and progress through the area a bit. I don't know why I went through that cave. What did I even get for that? It was an accessory. Fire damage negation. Man, I don't care about that. I'll equip it, but I don't care about it. I don't know why I did that. I guess we'll be ignoring that cave from now on. Eliminate everything between us and the objective. Because I believe the next grace that we interact with is the one that allows us to level up. I do have a ungodly amount of time in this game, but a surprising amount of it is during mods and randomizers. Things that are outside of the standard vanilla acumen. So I can't entirely rely on my memory for everything that's going to be conspiring in the future episodes. Let's go ahead and touch some grass. Certainly the best way to restore humanity. Now if I rested this, it should initiate a cutscene. Which we're gonna skip. Because I don't do cutscenes. Nope. I'm done. Don't care. Ugh, then I gotta sit here and continue to speak with people. Sure. I don't know what you said, but I'll accept it. Thanks for giving me your horse. It's a good dog. I'll make sure to feed it. Now I can level up? Hmm. I don't know if I want to. Yeah, I do. Let's get some more health. If you decide to play this game, for your first run, I suggest you put basically all of your points into Vigor. That is this first stat here. Let's see on the left, this 
stat row. The first one here is Vigor, and it is your most important stat. It's easy to overlook because you think, oh, I don't do enough damage in this game. That can be fixed as you play through by upgrading your weapons. Increasing your stats rarely increases your damage by a very small margin in this game, but increasing your health has a massive effect. Like this right here, me putting three points into my health is giving me more than a 10% boost to my current health. That's pretty big. And if you're following this in any kind of capacity for, I don't know, using it like a walkthrough or whatever, like I had said prior, then you're going to notice that we're mostly going into Vigor, and then after we hit certain goal points, like 40 Vigor, we'll start putting points into Endurance for extra carry weight and stamina, because, well, we're melee boys, we swing swords and hammers, take big object, smash big object into enemy until enemy is fine paced, put in oven for 30 minutes, forget it's in oven, move on to the next mission. But we're gonna put these points into Vigor for now. And there is something down in this little encampment down here that we want. It will allow us to do some interesting things with our weapons. Sneak up on this little guy. And power attack in the back, like I had said before. And then back attack. Now this won't be the optimal method for all enemies, but for most enemies it is going to be better. And the bigger your weapon is, the more effective that is over just sneak attacking. Now if you're deciding to go through this yourself, keep an eye out for these guys. This uh, horny boy, if you look at his right hand, he's holding a nice big brass horn. Because if he blows that, if he blows your horn, then he'll alert the entire camp, and you do not want that. If that happens, you go back to the grace, you touch it, reset the situation, and just <laughs> stick with that method. Keep it simple, keep it clean. One of the things we need here is this. This is a map. Mmm, yummy. Now that we've picked that up, if we hit select or, yeah, I don't know, whatever, we're just going to be running with PlayStation controller setup. So if you hit select, you'll notice that the map is now ungrayed. So that's what that did. We can now see all of Limgrave, which is, well, where we are. Look at us being places, doing things. You ever see those little white skulls there? Roll into them or attack them. I suggest rolling, it's easier. And pick up the golden runes that are inside of them because that's free XP. I believe each one is 200 XP. We'll check real quick. Well, souls. Runes? Ugh. We'll call them runes if I can remember. It says we have 1,172 runes, and if we use this, the lower right, you can see it says plus 200. So, each of those skulls that you run into is a collectible, holdable stack of runes, which means when you die, you won't drop them, and eventually you will die, unless you're a pro, like Geo Machina. But if you're Geo Machina, what the hell are you doing watching this channel? Go speedrun the game again or something. I want to see you... <laughs> <laughs> you being Geo Machina. For those of you who don't know, he's a speedrun slash challenge run type uh, Dark Souls player who, of course, has moved on to Elden Ring because it's superior. But Geo Machina is known for going through the game without ever getting hit repeatedly with every damn weapon in the game. I want to see him do it with one stamina and his bare fists. Why? Well, I know that he can do it. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. However, that doesn't mean... <laughs> that it wouldn't be a terrible experience for him. And half the fun of those runs is watching the person doing them suffer just a little bit. Let's go ahead and get this skull. The last thing we want to do is alert that guy with the spear and shield. He's trouble. Big trouble. I still have a hard time understanding exactly how to clear him out without getting hurt. Damn, these bushes are real good at stealthing. It's, <laughs> this guy did not notice me and I was right in front of him. Well, GG's nerd. Back to stealth mode. I don't want Spear Boy coming at me. Let's go ahead and cover the outskirts of this area. Uh, I can handle alerting just two of them. I don't see why not. A nice little jumping attack. Oh, Spear Boy's coming in. Ouch. Oh, that barely tickled me at all. Oh, that one hurt a little bit harder. Just the side effect of having big boy armor. Damn. This whole time I've been playing Sorcerer or Cleric. I actually like Cleric better. It's more entertaining because you're usually just a melee guy who can recover health and have a million different ways to resist damage but never actually use them. But when you run builds like that, you have no health, you have no armor, and you have no stamina. Yet everybody complains about how overpowered they are. Oh, see behind those bushes? That's another grace. Let's go ahead and grab that while we're here, but we won't sit at it because I would reset the entire area. That doesn't sound great. Just like Dark Souls, if you rest at these things, it will reset the world. The enemies will respawn. Very unpopular take, but I actually liked the system. Let's put more points into health. Might as well spend the souls, runes, sorry, before you lose them, because eventually you probably will lose them. Wait, did I just sit at the grace? I just was talking about how I wouldn't do that. <laughs> 
Well, priority numero uno is to make our way back to the front and kill the guy with the horn. We should be fine. Let's try doing this a little bit quicker this time. You swing quickly enough. This guy won't have time to raise his shield. You can avoid this guy's attacks easy and aggressively R1. I kind of want to farm these guys for a particular shield. Actually, let me check this one out. Yes, I still want to farm them for a certain shield, the brass shield. Because it is heavy, but it is very very good. It's a damn good shield. It's my favorite shield. Now, there are arguments for the best shields in the game, but the brass shield is my favorite because of how soon you can get it and how good it is once you do. It can carry you through the entire game if you want, but even without that, it's great to have from the beginning all the way until you get the best shields, like the fingerprint shield. So I might end up farming these guys a little bit eventually here. Okay, we don't have to kill the rest of them, right? Spear boy's fine. We can ignore the rest. We'll be coming down through this area, trying to clear out this disaster piece. This is where it would be advantageous to have ranged weapons or magic. Because I could pew pew this guy. If we move over a little bit, he should have a dog next to him. Oh, there's the dog. There's a dog and two of these guys, which is... Quite a lot of trouble, really. We're gonna wait until the other two move away, and then try to sneak our way up to this guy. Nope, he noticed us. Stand behind the barrels, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, it must have been his imagination. Screw it, let's just go in. Jumping attack for the win. Luckily these guys have no poise. Oh, there's the other dog. I was wrong. Two dogs, two humans. And that guy apparently didn't hear enough <laughs> to be alerted. <laughs> Oh man, this is the most must have been the wind tier stuff I've ever seen. It is impressive. <laughs> you and me both, guys. Like I said when I was making my character, I have more eyes than IQ. Looks like I'm not the only one. Okay, they're all leaving. Now let's go and just get this guy. Then we'll probably just initiate the big fight. Oh, dog. Okay, go ahead and Estus up since they have a little bit of distance from us. And work on taking this guy out. Ouch, he hit me in between my attacks. And now we just have Spear Boy, who again is just <laughs> walking into the area. What is wrong with these guys? Let's go and just get a nice little sneak attack here. He didn't know I was there. Don't worry, I don't know where I am either. Huh. I got a smithing stone. It's a pretty good draw. Before we piss anyone else off, let's go down into this little area. It's a nice little stairway past those guys. Into this dramatically heavy door. And this is what we want from this area. Not the chest, but what's inside it. The Ash of War, Storm Stomp, which, meh, whatever. But the whetstone knife is where it's at. That will allow me to put ashes of war, which are abilities, onto my weapon, which I will display against this spear nerd right about now. This long sword, is this a long sword? Yeah. Has a ash of war called square off, where I take this little stance. See this right here? Oh, I'm just kind of getting all edgy right here. Right. Now if I hit R1, I have a upward swoop. That's my 15 frame launcher. And then I have R2, which is another sort of uppercut, but heavier and more stabby. And we're going to use that against this guy, because he's got a shield, and these are all pretty good against shields. So we'll avoid that attack. And then, ouch, avoid that one as well. And now we'll do the big heavy attack. It's more or less the goal. It's got a surprising amount of range, too, until it doesn't. Let's go ahead and just chug. Just keep stabbing this guy. I'm not too worried about the rest of the camp. I can handle them without taking damage, but him... I'm okay with trading. Well, he's dead. Good for him, huh? Let's go ahead and kill the rest of the guys at this camp and then probably reset it. And we might, if we're bad on the RNG, have to spend the rest of this episode... Wait, what? My controller stopped working. That was weird. We might have to spend the rest of this episode farming for that brass shield, because it is oh so good. Clear these two dorks out. That is nice that you can attack fast enough to just stagger them forever. And I guess the last one remaining is Shield Boar here. Who? We can just sneak right around. They really do have terrible eyesight, don't they? Gotta get some new standard issue helmets, because those ones are clearly blocking your vision. Interact with this Grace again. Screw it. Another level up. We've gone from 520 health at the start to 650 over the course of, I think, four Vigor level ups. It's an extra 130 HP. That's nothing to scoff at. We've gone up over a fifth, or one fifth health. We're getting strong, stronger by the day. Pair this with the fact that in the future we'll be putting points into Endurance, which will in turn make us tankier because we'll be able to put on stronger armors that give us more damage resistance. And you have yourself a recipe for being indestructible in a game that is supposedly difficult. But that is neither here nor there. For the time being, I think our focus is going to be a bit of a time lapse as I try to farm for this damn brass shield. This thing doesn't want to drop. So, I'll catch you once we've achieved that little goal. Here we go.
That only took like an hour. Never had such a hard time getting that item before. But it is damn good. I wouldn't doubt if they just drop the drop rate for it a bit. But I earned about the equivalent of three levels. It's not a bad thing. And I think we're going straight into Vigor. I think I'll try to get that to about 30 before I start investing into Endurance or anything else. Actually, I should probably check something. Can I even... I can still equip it. Good. Now, the reason I wanted this is that while this shield is relatively heavy, if you look at it, it's a medium shield. It has no skill, so you can put any assigned Ash of War that you want on it, which can be useful later on for the magic parry and etc, etc. Its resistances are pretty good. If you look at the damage negation, it's better than everything about this heater shield, which is also one of the better shields in the game. But the biggest part is if you look at the middle section that says guard damage negation at the bottom of it it says guard boost now what that means is how much of your stamina damage taken while blocking is reduced by the shield and that's a flat percent so whatever stamina damage you take while blocking with this heater shield is reduced by 49 percent now the brass shield while still being a medium shield which means you can parry with it if you so assign the ash of war for that and it's relatively light for this this has a guard boost of 56 so the stamina damage you would have received while blocking is reduced by 56 percent while using this and the stat requirement for it is oh 16 strength uh oh i need more levels <laughs> Whoops, I forgot that I was two-handing my sword, so it was reflecting as if I had that in my stat pool. But that's not too far away. I already have 14 strength, so that's two levels. We'll get that as we move along. That shield is no joke, however. It was definitely worth farming. But this is going to be the end of this episode. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next episode. But for now, goodbye. God, he's just so edgy holding the sword like this.